Today, a jury in Boulder will continue deliberations against the King Super shooter. Amada Lisa is facing 10 counts of first degree murder, as well as dozens of other charges. Night News reporter Courtney Yoon joins us live from Boulder. And Courtney, we could have a verdict soon. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Corey and Jordan. It's been a long journey for the 10 families of these victims. They had to wait more than three years for the trial, and now they have to wait for the verdict from the jury. The defense and prosecution made their closing arguments on Friday. There's no dispute that the gunman did it. Now the jury has to decide if the shooter is guilty because he planned it and killed people with deliberation and intent, or was he insane and incapable of telling right from wrong? Here are the jury's options. They can find him not guilty, meaning he didn't do it, or the state failed to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Another option is not guilty by reason of insanity, meaning the jury concluded he did it, but the defense presented credible evidence that he was insane at the time and prosecutors failed to prove otherwise. They can also find him guilty, which would mean the judge only has one option to sentence him to spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole. Erica Mahoney lost her father in the shooting. She says she's been working on her own healing so she can be present for the trial. I was pregnant when my dad was killed. And mm -hmm. so just making space for grief and joy at the same time, balancing life and death at the same time yeah. has, has, been a, has been a long journey. The jury will continue deliberations today. We'll be here waiting for their decision and we'll be sure to bring it to you on air and online once we hear about it. Live in Boulder, Courtney Yoon, Nine News. Courtney, thank you for the update. Today, a former gymnastics coach charged with sexual assault of a child is set to be sentenced. 37-year-old Eric Oldham was the owner and coach of A-plus Athletics in Centennial. The gymnastics center permanently closed in August of 2021. He was arrested back in 2022 after the Adams County Sheriff's Office says a victim came forward with information about inappropriate behavior toward an athlete. In April of this year, a jury found him guilty of five felonies. Oldham's sentencing is scheduled for 3 o'clock this afternoon. Right now, the family of a missing 16-year-old Indigenous girl is asking for help finding her. Now, news reporter Brianna Clark joins us live in the newsroom. Brianna, the family is concerned because she's without her medication. Yeah, can you imagine? Katie Michael has epilepsy. Her mother tells us this is the first time Katie has been off her medication. Here's a picture of the 16-year-old. On September 8th, the morning of Katie's disappearance, her mom says the two had breakfast together at their home in Elizabeth. Then Katie went up to her room. A few hours later, her mother went to check on her, and she was gone. That was 15 days ago. Her mother says this isn't like Katie to go days without checking in. I would just tell her no matter what happens that we love her, and we just want to know she's okay. And to go home or get, you know, if she can get to a phone or she can get to whatever, just to let somebody know she's Okay. Katie is an Alaska native, so they've been using the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Relatives Task Force as a resource through all this. The family tells us they've also taken on a lot of the ground searching themselves, along with passing out flyers. Live in the newsroom, Brianna Clark. Nine News. All right, Brianna, we hope they can find her. Thank you. Right now, the United States government is running out of time and money. A potential threat of shutdown is looming once again. Last week, a six month funding extension failed to get through the House of Representatives. But Speaker Mike Johnson has another proposal and he may have support from Democratic lawmakers. It would fund the government until December 20th. It's a limited continuing resolution or CR that in addition to funding the government for the next three months, it also includes more money for the Secret Service. Unlike Johnson's funding proposal that failed to get out of the House last week, this plan does not include the controversial SAVE Act that focuses on preventing non-citizens from voting, which is already illegal. The one thing you cannot have is a government shutdown. It would be politically beyond stupid for us to do that right before the election because certainly we'd get the blame. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries issued a statement saying, quote, Congress is now on a bipartisan path to avoid a government shutdown that would hurt everyday Americans. Just into the newsroom, the Israeli military says it struck 300 targets in Lebanon in one of the most intense airstrikes in nearly a year of fighting. Lebanon's health ministry said 50 people were killed, 300 wounded in the strikes against the Hezbollah militant group. 
Hezbollah says it is an open-ended battle right now with Israel. Dashcam video shows the moment a Hezbollah rocket hit in northern Israel on Sunday morning. The militant group, which the U.S. has designated as a terrorist organization, says the barrage of rockets are in retaliation for other Israeli attacks in Lebanon that killed dozens. White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby says the U.S. is using diplomacy to try and prevent an all-out war. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky kicked off his visit to the U.S. by touring a manufacturing plant in Scranton, Pennsylvania yesterday. The plant produces critical munitions for his country. Zelensky shared these photos on X of him meeting with plant workers and inspecting artillery shells. Zelensky says that he has reached agreements to expand cooperation between Pennsylvania and Ukraine. Later this week, Zelensky is expected to visit New York and speak to the United Nations General Assembly and also visit Washington, D.C. to present his victory victory plan for the war with Russia to President Joe Biden and other officials. New this morning, NASA astronauts Tracy C. Dyson, along with two Russian cosmonauts, just splashed down minutes ago, officially completing their mission on the International Space Station. This video just into the newsroom. It landed off the coast of Kazakhstan. Dyson spent 184 days in space on her fourth flight. She'll be taken to Houston after being cleared from landing. How about that? Fascinating indeed. Meantime, for today, we're going to be in the upper 70s, about 80 degrees for us. Mostly sunny skies should be kind of back to summer. We only topped that at 61 yesterday for us here in Denver today. Much warmer than that. But if you think today's warm, take a look at what happens later on this week. Details on that in my full forecast in just a couple of minutes. Eric. Chris, thank you so much. Right now, we are still following some really heavy delays on northbound 225. If you're getting ready to travel into Aurora, if you typically take northbound 225 up toward I-70, this is going to impact you. So we do have a crash still working this morning, approaching the 6th Avenue exit. It's really just before the ramp exit, so folks still are able to get off at 6th Avenue. It's not fully blocked off. But we've got a couple cars that were involved in the crash that are still working to be towed out of the way. So as it stands, Right lane and the right shoulder are still blocked off while police and crews are working to get things fully cleared out. So we do have multiple lanes back open on the interstate, which is great. At one point, we were fully shut down. But what's not great is we backed up all the way to Iliff and we're dealing with upwards of a 20 minute backup in this area because of this crash. So if you're going to be traveling into Aurora, you may want to consider taking Abilene, Sable or Chambers. Those all run parallel to the interstate as your work around this morning.